it's a, a good thing to have in the world. Graffiti's both. It's beautiful what they can do if they have time and space, but I mean, I find a lot that to me is vulgar and a lot that's beautiful. Definitely beautiful. I think it's a form of art. You know, as a musician and a photographer, that's a form of art, and people are passionate about it, they put time into it, and I think that's the most beautiful thing about it, so it's definitely something beautiful. It's not vulgar at all. I think all of them are full of different stories, and I think that's the coolest part about it. All of them say different things, you know, whether it's inappropriate or not. You know, there's always more and more art underneath of them, and I think that's really cool. Each of them are relevant in different ways. Obviously, the ones that look like beautiful masterpieces with, you know, a curse word on top of it pisses me off. <laughs> but at the same time, that person maybe was emotional at that point. How long have I been doing this? I've been doing this now for four, going on five years. I had a lot of free time in the morning, so I'd wake up early, play some video games for an hour or two, go to work. My wife got all pissed and told me, you got to get out and do something. So I went out, typically on my own, but uh, in the last couple of years, I've been having a lot of friends that go out. I've met graffiti writers that have normal nine to five jobs, in like an office setting. I meet graffiti writers that have kids, and unless you know what they look like, you can be walking down the street you'll see a guy in a business suit. He'll be a graffiti writer at night, and you don't even know it. It's anybody and everybody. It's something that, once you get sucked in, you get sucked into it. My definition of herb exit is somebody that goes out to abandoned places, buildings, train stations, whatever it be, somewhere that was man-made, essentially, that has now been left to ride purely for the sake of going there and taking photos and some of them don't even take photos some of them just like to go and see what it's like for themselves but that is my definition the urbex world and the graffiti world they overlap but they're two different worlds completely because even though they both are in the same general ballpark they're not the same thing urbexers are there to see what the building looks like they don't care mostly about the graffiti, they care mostly about the location itself. Graffiti writers, they see a location and they look at it as a blank canvas. They want to use it, not just take photos of it. The thrill I really get is when I find an abandoned spot that already has a lot of graffiti and art in it. It's a pleasure for me to find this art that most people would not enjoy seeing what they can do when they've got a lot of space and time. A lot of people put stigmatism on graffiti writers. It's them trying to express themselves most of the time in an art form that most people don't accept. But you hear names like Keith Haring or Steve Powers and they started off as graffiti artists also and now all of a sudden they're accepted. We place this stigmatism as a society on them just because of what they do when all they're doing is making art. Graffiti doesn't have a definitive history book, at least for Philadelphia especially. Um, there's no definitive history book. You have to learn as you go. You have to find somebody that knows their history and learn from them. It's just really refreshing to see, but my favorite part is definitely all the way at the end when you can see the bridge and you're on the water, because um, there's always new artwork down there. What better way to express yourself on the walls?